it's been a while since I've done any painting because I've been busy writing. Uh, but at the moment the manuscript is with the editor, so I thought it was about time that I dived right back in again. I was a little nervous about painting after such a long break, but the only way to deal with that was to simply get the paint on the canvas and get on with it. I have to confess that all the time I'm putting this cobalt glue onto the canvas, there's a little voice in the back of my head telling me it's too bright. But that's never stopped me before, so I'm just going to keep on going, in spite of the fact that I don't have that much confidence at the moment. Let's just see what happens. After all, it is only a painting and it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out. Using a round brush, a very narrow one, and Mars black and titanium white, I'm just marking out the main features of an eye, including a white flash that goes through the pupil and the iris, uh, which is quite a nice technique with eyes to make them look realistic. The titanium white is quite important when you're painting on such a bright background because I'm just marking out the features that I'm then going to put in in a different colour. You can see that the iris has now gone on very much as a, a burnt umber um, because the bright blue at the background, there's a danger that that will overwhelm any colour that I put on top, which is why I mark it out with white first uh, because that, that tends to neutralise the intensity of the blue and enable the beauty of the other colour that I'm trying to use to, to shine through. Nevertheless, it is important to remember that the first layer of white that goes on to any colour as intense as cobalt blue is going to look patchy and quite weak. Um, and it's very easy at that point to lose all confidence in the work that you're doing and you think, oh, this is rubbish and chuck it aside. Uh, but you need to stay strong and keep going because that is just the first layer you're going to put on. By the time you've finished, uh, that patchy, wishy-washy nature is just going to be gone completely uh, and the lovely colours that you're using on top are going to shine in their true glory. So just keep going. My advice in most situations with paintings when you think they're not working is that you probably haven't put enough paint on yet. Uh, so I would always say just add more. If it's not working, you're not going to lose anything by trying. And acrylics are particularly good for this because obviously if, if you get to the point where you don't want to continue, you simply let it dry and you can paint over the whole thing and start again. You could be forgiven for thinking I've lost the plot a little bit with this painting. It is starting to look a little bit balmy, but I'm quite enjoying it. One thing to remember with acrylics is that actually it is possible to make some corrections. So if you do put uh, paint in an area that, that you're, you realise later that you actually don't want it there, uh, if you can get to it quickly enough with uh, a damp brush um, with, with water on the bristles, you can usually rub it away. Um, you certainly have to move quite quickly, but it is possible to lift the paint off very gently uh, by rubbing with damp bristles of a brush and dabbing with a little bit of absorbent tissue paper. Um, however, if it has permanently solidified onto the canvas, then, then you have to think about maybe adapting your painting around the area that you're not quite so happy with. Okay so now I've got a really nice base as to where I'm going with this painting. Um, the white has taken a lot of the intensity of the blue out and it's time to start adding some lovely colours over the top. I'm going to start initially with a pink. Um, that's not going to be my final colour, again it's another layer uh, that is part of building up this, uh, this three-dimensional image. I'm using uh, Silk Purple, uh, which is a De La Rowney colour, which is number 404, I believe. Um, I really rather like it, but it's having quite a flattening effect on painting at this stage. Uh, but I'm not worried because I'm going to be bringing out the texture and the three dimensions um, in a little while. The next stage is to start bringing in some really bright colours, and I'm working with this System 3 De La Rowney Velvet Purple, which I absolutely adore. And because we've got that white base followed by the silk purple underneath, the beauty of the velvet purple is able to really shine here. The next stage is to switch back to the narrow round brush and the white uh, and bring back some of the texture. So alternating between the velvet purple and the white, I'm able to build up additional layers, uh, each one adding to more of a three-dimensional feel to the character. And once I've done that, I would then move on to putting more definition around the eyes. 
Adding eyeliner and long eyelashes uh, definitely adds to the cute factor of any painting, I feel. Um, I always add them as part of my signature move with any of my animal paintings, and it always makes me smile because I feel that their little characters really show through. Now I'm down to final adjustments using a little bit of grey and white for highlights, uh, adjusting the shape of the beak of this little ostrich. Um, I'm really quite pleased with how this has turned out and I think I will uh, arrange for this to feature on, on my cards um, in future because it's rather fun. Um, either way I just love the fact that it's bright, it's cheerful and more importantly it's completely cheered me up after a very stressful week at work. I really enjoyed sharing this, I hope you have enjoyed watching it and I wish you all the best of luck with any of your paintings.